I have a new edition of Bach's second cello suite in D minor, BWV 1008. And there's a link for the sheet music in the description, but today I'm really just going to be talking about um, my edition and some of the choices I made in relationship to the key that I chose, as well as the notational style and texture that I chose for the piece. Um, if you follow that link, you can also see performance videos that I'm making for all of the movements of the work, so you can, you can hear my interpretation as well. So the main things I want to talk about today are, are the key that I chose, the notation style and texture that I chose, and then my, um, my goal in terms of interpretation. And I hope that just with that little bit of information in the performance videos, that'll give you some context for playing the piece. So first thing, I'll, let's talk about the, the key that's been chosen. So I've chosen D minor with drop D tuning. So this low E has been dropped down to a D. And that allows us to play pretty much like the entire um, piece with, with no alteration. So back in, before even my college days, I played this piece and I played it right off the cello music in bass clef. So I, I read it off a cello score in bass clef um, and it, I read it right off that music. There's only one or two places where I have to alter it. Uh, because of range issues, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. That key signature brings you down into a very low register, which allows you to, you know, play uh, lots of lines that um, can be interpreted like a cello. It's very low in register. It's nice doing vibrato on these low strings, um, and it, that's just the way I hear it in that in that lower register. Now, I'll talk more about the key, but um, the notation style and texture that I've chosen. So what I've done with the addition is I'm presenting it, I'm essentially presenting the cello score in treble clef. So I've taken the cello score, put a treble clef on there, and, and, and that's it. And that, that's what you're looking at when you look at my addition. You're looking at the original cello music. I've modernized it a, like a touch by like bringing the voices together rhythmically in a few spots, but it, for all intents and purposes, you're reading a cello score in treble clef with guitar fingering. Um, I did not include the bow markings, but you know the original cello music is is uh, available for free off IMSLP. You can check that out if you want to do a comparison you can, but I think that's much more for the more advanced players and those players are going to want to do that comparison regardless of what edition they're using. So in terms of the texture that I've chosen, because I'm presenting the piece in this low register and in the original kind of notation style, the interpretation is not really like a multi-voice texture. The interpretation is much like a cellist would read the music. You're trying to bring out the implied counterpoint and implied voice voices that are written into the music, which makes these works particularly brilliant of Bach, that he implies this multi-voice texture, even though you kind of just see a single line. So therefore, my, my interpretation is also like that. It's, it's bringing out the implied counterpoint without a full realization of it. So I have not written, you know, down stems on the bass voice, for example, because that's not, you know, the original notational style. That's an, an interpretive thing that you can do when you hear an, a series of notes that sound like a bass note, for example. <laughs> heard as a separate voice. But I, you know, I'm not putting downstems on there because the, the issue that occurs when other editors do that is that you end up having to fill the voice out or it's very inconsistent. Um, so the off, often the solution is to bring it up into a much higher key and add a lot of extra bass notes to fully realize the bass voice. But even then it's, it's fairly inconsistent. So I'm going for something different and both uh, ideas are very valid. My um, interpretation here is just veering more towards the cello music and a cello interpretation. Or what I'll say is it's an enhanced interpretation of the cello music where I'm bringing out that implied counterpoint and voicing with extra sustain that it, that's not possible on a cello, 
but not bringing it so far towards like keyboard work or a lute um, arrangement where lots of extra notes have been added. So for, for example, even in the prelude here, when I interpret any of those arpeggio figures, um, I do let things sustain more than a cello could. Sustain, sustain, but then I release and end with a single note. Sustain, single note. Sustain, single note. And I pretty much stop the other voices. And so what you get there is a, um, a feeling of a multi-voice texture and sustain. But but that you end up with like the, the the written note at the end of it, which is much more similar to like a cello performance of it. And that and that there's advantages and disadvantages to that. The advantage is that I can be pretty consistent um, and also not not carefree but practical in terms of what's capable on the guitar. So I can be fairly consistent in the way that I interpret the music by adding some extra sustain and bringing out those extra voices or multi-voice textures, but not going so far that I have to worry about like writing in extra notes and recomposing the piece uh, because I can be consistent in that aesthetic that I've chosen. So it's like an enhanced cello aesthetic. Okay, so some of the disadvantages to my edition would just be that you know, in terms of inter interpretation, um, you, you have to dig into the score a little bit and, and just open your ears and listen a lot. But I think that's true of any score anyway. And the advantage is that, you know, you don't have much of an editor in the way. You, you, you can be pretty confident you're playing box music and not, not too much of an editor's music. Or an editor and, you know, Bach meeting halfway with compromises. Nevertheless, there's a few places in the score, like um, in, in measure 40, for example, where the original motif is a low C sharp followed by an A and a G. But, and you could change the motif. But I, I still want that, that rising figure that appears throughout the piece. So I've added like a low E there. So you get that low register, but I've always marked it in brackets so you can see what is editorial and what is not. In other places, um, like at the end of the prelude, you know, the original has these long chords, but you know, they're pretty spacious and on, on a cello, you'd get lots of extra sustain and growth and intensity in the sustained bowing. On the guitar, um, you kind of lose that effect, so I'm, I've added arpeggios. In the score, I've just written the original chord, but I've made a little note and shown you a suggestive pattern that you could use. You know, and then I have some control um, over growth and, and, and whatnot in the texture. And then besides that, there's just one or two other places where, you know, I've added like a low note to, to to keep the contour of the line. But for the most part, you can just play the original cello music. I have added slurs to the music, but only um, to bring out consistent motifs or where it um, sounded particularly blocky on the guitar because of single string playing. So um, quite often I'll, I'll pick a little motif and keep it, keep it very similar, you know, like in 44, Like whenever that that um, sequence occurs, I keep the motif the same by keeping a slur in there. But I do encourage you to add more slurs to the piece. Mine are very connected to the motivic elements of the piece, but especially later on, feel free to add more. It facilitates legato and um, and can help with the speed of some of the movements as well. Other sections, you know, if there's a long string of notes on a single string. Um, I will I will add some slurs in there in so that you don't get you know like a really blocky single string playing, um, but like I said I, I'm, I've been pretty minimal about that. 
that's the basic I idea. Um, you can check out my performances of the different movements, but I hope that gives you a little bit of context for the music. Make sure you listen, if you're using my edition, listen to lots of cellists play the music. Um, if you can listen to it on modern cello and on Baroque cello, that'd be great. That gives, that'll give you a really clear idea of what the implied, the idea of implied counterpoint means and implied multi-voice textures, even though on a cello you mainly hear one note at a time. Uh, but also listen to, you know, guitarists and lute players play this music. Uh, it can be very revealing and very interesting to hear it realized in full with lots of notes added. Uh, and there's disadvantages and advantages to that. So you can check that out, but you certainly want to explore all the different ideas as much as possible. Um, this particular edition is based on, on my kind of enhanced cello interpretation, um, and you can, you can listen to that on my videos.